Hello, this is Robert Smith. I'm at Glandor County Court, Ireland. And back behind me you can see the sea. I've been receiving a lot of emails about what to say, having difficulty in saying the right thing when you're addressing your issues. And so what I'd like to help you understand how to address your issues without ever saying anything. Because you have to understand too, whenever we have problems or we have issues that bother us, usually they come without words. That means they just show up inside you. You feel it, something bothers you, and the difficulty is trying to name whatever it is that you feel. The interesting thing about sensations in your bodies and feelings, they come without words. They come without meaning. They just show up because of something you've experienced. And somebody asked me, so what's the difference in feelings and sensations in the body and emotions? Well, the biggest difference is emotions are labels that we've given to feelings and sensations in the body. So how do you address something inside you that bothers you and you have no idea what to name it? The real key about addressing that is, first of all, I usually would close my eyes and notice inside me that I feel something. Notice the location of the feeling. Notice how big the feeling or how strong the feeling or the sensations of that feeling. And then I just notice it. I notice the size, the sensation, how big. And then what I do is I start aiming at those feeling sensations or whatever it is inside me. And all you really have to do is to tap and say this. I release and let it go. It's safe to let that go. It's okay as I let this go, it's okay to let it go, I release and let it go, whatever it means, wherever it comes from, whatever it represents, I'm safe as I let it go. Take a deep breath, blow, blow it out, and say peace. So again, going inside you and noticing exactly where you feel it, what it feels like, the size of it, if there's an image in your mind, look at the image, the faces, the, uh, the tone of voice of what's being said, whatever it is, and just aim at that. And all you have to say is, I let it go. It's safe to let it go. I release and let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Deep breath. Blow it out and say peace. Now that's very, very simple. And then you don't have to know where it came from who gave it to you or whatever, just notice within you that you have it. It makes it so much easier because then you don't have to know, you don't have to guess, you don't have to dig in the past. All you do is you recognize currently, right now, how you know. You feel it and you tap it away. Now, now how, how many times do you tap it? You tap however long it takes. You know, I always say tap until it's gone or until you pass out. Either way, you come out on top. The whole world will change for you. So feel it, tap it, and release it. Do it over and over again. And sometimes you may have to break it down even more. Let's say, for example, you feel a tightness in your stomach, for example. And you may guess, well, you say, okay, how tight is it? Like 50 pounds of tightness or five pounds of tightness? Notice the tightness. If you have a headache, notice how strong the headache is or how sharp the pain is. And then you tap on each piece and part. You don't even have to know what it means. You don't have to know where it came from tap on it. Now usually as you're tapping on this your mind will begin to open up and give you answers or trails to other issues. What you do is you just notice how you know currently, notice how it feels, and as you tap on it tap wherever the mind leads you. Keep tapping, keep tapping, keep tapping. Somebody sent me an email said, well Robert, what's the longest you ever tapped on an issue? Since I've been tapping for 11 years I wrote them back, is that 11 years? because I'm always having issues. And then, then I know what they're really saying. How long did you stay with one issue specifically and how long did you tap on it? I said, I don't know. You know, I just tap until it's gone or until, until I pass out and I wake up and I forgot they even had the problem. Ha, huh. no, but seriously, you just stay with it until it's gone. Keep tapping and then let your mind lead you and guide you wherever you need to go. So that's, that's one of the areas that with faster EFT is that I teach. You don't have to know where it came from, what it represents, or whoever gave it to you. One area. What do you say when you tap? 
Let it go, let it go. It's safe to let it go. Just let it go. I'm okay as I let it go. Deep breath. Blow it out and say peace. As a matter of fact, after you say peace, you can also drift to a memory. Drift to a place that you felt peaceful. Laying on the beach and the seagulls in the background. The waves are coming in. Or maybe getting a massage and notice how wonderful it feels. Whatever you find your peace, go back and revisit. And then go back to your problem. You keep going over and over again until it's gone. So what do you say when you have a problem? That's right. I let it go. It's safe to let it go. Just let it go. Take a deep breath. Blow it out and say peace. Very simple. Very easy. Now also let me help you understand something is when you're tapping on yourself, what we do is we aim at the feeling. Which means you notice it, you recognize it, and you don't have to hold it while you tap it. That's too complex. So what you do is you aim within you how you know you have it, you feel it, you're aiming, and then you focus directly on the tapping. And I feel when I'm tapping, I notice the feeling first, I'm aiming at the feeling, and I tap, let it go. I'm feeling my fingertips, let it go. I'm feeling my fingertips. It's safe to let it go. It's safe to let it go. Just let it go. Let it all go. Deep breath. We gotta keep this simple, guys, because that's just how it works. If you do it this way, it's gonna be really easy and your problems are gonna disappear faster. Don't hold on to it, but recognize it, identify it, and then aim at it. Now, oftentimes when you're working on this stuff, like I mentioned before, it may lead you to memories. If it leads you to the memories, now go to the memory, you notice what you're seeing inside the memory, look at the characters, notice your emotions, notice your feelings, you don't have to label anything, Feel it, see it, and release and let it go, release and let it go, release and let it go. Deep breath, blow it out, and peace. Keep doing it until here's the real key to truly making changes. The memory was doing this one way. Say, for example, making this up, your father yelled at you and said something bad. You keep tapping until that memory, he's no longer yelling at you. And it's no longer playing the same, but he's giving you a hug and saying, you know, I love you, thank you, and just keep changing how you represent this because when you change this you're actually changing every aspect about yourself this is what i call the flip you've you've got to make sure you flip the memories flipping the memories means it can never play the old way ever again and you know some people say well robert <clears throat> it really did happen i was born i said yes but you're not being born now yes it did happen back then but it's not happening anymore it's not your responsibility to maintain the past. The deal is, history is determined by the storyteller. I suggest change your story. You know, I think it's interesting. I think Linda had said this in one of the seminars. I mean, she's had some pretty amazing bad stuff happen to her. And she said something in class. She goes, you know, I had a good childhood. And she stopped for a second. Wait, did I say that? Because you do have a good childhood. When you go to your worst memories, the worst experiences, and they now become one of the best things that ever happened to you, you know you've healed. And of course, if you're always looking for problems, the best, way to find, best place to find your problems is family reunions, go back to school, go back to your school ground, go back to relationship with exes, um, currents, mother-in-laws, in-laws, brother-in-laws, son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, You'll find your problems and make peace with them. This is Robert Smith. So what do you say when you have a problem? You don't have to guess what it is. You don't, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to know what it is. You don't have to be a psychic. You don't have to be an intuitive. Feel it and keep tapping until you know it's gone. Because the unconscious mind is your friend and it's working on your behalf. And I hope this helps you. And if you always need any help, guys, you can always go to my website, I do have people who are trained by me and have the belief system that I have, and they too can help you. So keep on tapping on you. I suggest also watch these videos over and over again. Keep tapping, keep tapping, take notes, save the good ones. They're all good, but save the good ones, the ones that really touch you and have a meaning, and then keep on tapping on you. Learning to love you is being nice to you on the inside. And that includes all the pictures, all the sounds, every word, every sensation. This is Robert Smith. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Salon Cha. In Ireland.
Tchau.